So, uh, if you are a direct t to excuse me, direct TV subscriber, um, you are already aware of this. Uh, if you are a direct TV subscriber and you wanted to go uh, after my wonderful show and go watch uh, some ESPN or maybe one of your favorite sitcoms on ABC. Uh, you're going to be shit out of luck, right? So Disney-owned television channels were knocked off of DirecTV platforms last week. I think not yesterday Sunday, but the Sunday before, uh, after a new distribution deal between the two companies fell apart, right? Uh, this is gonna this affects nearly 11 million homes. So you know, think of how many people are in the average home. So we're talking tens of millions of people uh, being affected by this, and it basically happened out of nowhere. So again, this was like Sunday. Uh, Evening, if you're in the if you're on the East Coast, I think it was like mid afternoon, like maybe four or five o'clock if you're in California. So it again happened out of nowhere. It happened like right before kickoff for a USC LSU football game, and it happened in the middle of ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Open. Um, so it was very inconvenient. There was no warning. It was just like oh, pulling the plug. Uh, I have a quote here from Rob Thun, who's the chief content officer at Directv, saying, "Quote." They want to continue to chase maximum profits and dominant control at the expense of consumers, making it harder for them to select the shows and sports they want at a reasonable price, end quote. Um, and of course, you know, the, them be fighting words. So Disney, of course, has to respond. So we got some quotes here from Disney Entertainment heads Dana Walden, Alan Bergman, and uh, ES, the ESPN chairman, uh, Jimmy Pitaro, saying, quote, while we're open to offering DirecTV flexibility in terms which we've extended to other distributors, we will not enter in an agreement Enter into an agreement that undervalues our portfolio of television channels and programs. We urge DirecTV to do what's in the best interest of their customers and finalize a deal that would immediately restore our programming, end quote. It's all very dramatic, and you're going to get my thoughts on that in, in just a bit. But, you know, so clearly, clearly both sides are saying, well, we're trying to, you know trying to do this, we're, we're really trying to look out for the consumers, but it's this other guy who's causing problems, right? Um, and again, Disney owns and operates a lot of different channels, so including but not limited to ABC, ESPN, Freeform, FX, National Geographic, uh, and of course the the uh, the Disney Channel singular, like, the, you know, the one for children, which I love when I was a kid. And I guess maybe still, if I, I don't really watch TV. But anyway, so what's the context of this? Like, why is this happening? So television distributors or cable companies, or, you know, companies like DirecTV, because technically it's not cable, it's satellite, right? Um, which I don't understand. Like, when I was a kid, I thought satellite TV was, like, a big luxury. Isn't it worse? Like, if, they, if it rains, doesn't... I mean, if someone if someone's watching and knows about, like, how satellite TV works, please let me know. Because I've always... I, I really don't understand, like, what makes it that different other than just, like, it's one's using physical cables, the other one is using, like, signals using satellites. But... Um, but ultimately, companies like DirecTV or Charter, which controls Spectrum, or Verizon, or all these different companies are the middlemen between networks like ABC and then obviously the companies that run them, Disney, uh, and the audiences. The, the, something like DirecTV is this this middle party. Um, so, you know, channels just don't, just don't just end up in cable packages. A deal has to be worked out that satisfies all the parties, or at the very least the network and uh, the the distributor. Um, usually audiences are secondary or tertiary. Um, and this has been really important for the bottom line of companies like Disney uh, because programming fees have been reliable sources of income for years, right? Um, I, you know, when they work out these deals, someone like Disney will get a cut of every DirecTV subscriber that has ABC as part of their package. So it's in Disney's interest to find a way, perhaps forcing them anti-competitively, um, to make sure that basically as many DirecTV subscribers have or have to have uh, their channels, right? Um, and outages have happened before. So companies, there have been situations like this where a deal was not met. So com and, and company and the companies, as we're seeing now, will wage these like very sanctimonious PR campaigns against the other party. I mean, I remember like seeing this when I was like a, uh, not a kid, but I remember when I was in college, um, and we had cable at NYU, like in our dorms, which was, which was great. Um, and we were watching something like a kid's channel for some, like we were watching some show. I think I was researching it for a class and there was like an ad. 
I think it was through Spectrum or something. And there was like an ad being like, PSA, Disney wants to take away your channels. Blah, blah, blah. A P- or, or maybe it was the reverse. It was Disney saying like, Spectrum wants to take away your channels. And, and it's like weird because it's, it, it's, it's business, but they're trying to make like this almost moral appeal. Like, it's like, it's, it's framed almost like a PSA, um, you know, and we see this in comments like we're getting now. So again, another quote from Thun, who's the, the, uh, chief, a content officer at DirecTV saying, quote, Disney is in the business of creating alternate realities, but this is the real world where we believe you earn your, where you earn your way and must answer for your own actions, end quote. That's like really loaded. <laughs> like, it just feels like very disproportionate to like what the situation is. Uh, and the LA Times notes that, uh, you know, a similar situation happened just about a year ago uh, with Disney, again, and Charter Communications, which operates Spectrum, right? Spe- if you have cable through Spectrum. Uh, and this did lead to a, a blackout of Disney channels on Spectrum for uh, almost two weeks. Um, I do remember this happening. See, it's it's... At first, I was like, huh, that's where they're both happening around the same time of year. And then I'm like, oh, no, it's not interesting. It's because sports are about to start up, right? So one of the most, one of, if not the only thing that's keeping traditional pay TV alive. Um, so, of course, it's going to be a big sticking point, right? Um, and as cord cutting continues, companies are really just looking out for themselves, right? So, you know, LA Times notes that DirecTV has lost more than half of its subscribers. So, it's really imperative when 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 companies are negotiating these deals, and that's why they're making these like moral appeals, almost to say, you know, like the equivalent of like call your representative, like it said they want you to like call Spectrum and complain. Um, you know, they they want it's it's in this it's an existential necessity uh, to walk away from one of these deals with uh, terms that really set themselves up. Um, so the big source of contention with this situation is Directv wants to offer genre-based packages, right? So obviously, infamously with cable, the big issue that people always complained about was like you had to buy a big package that was expensive and you can't you can't do it a la carte. You, if you only want these 10 channels, you have to find a package that has those channels and usually you're going to have like way more channels that you don't really care about or don't want at all. You're not even going to watch once. Um, so in DirecTV's mind, it would... It, by offering genre-based packages, so maybe like a movie package or a sports package, it would allow consumers to more or less choose which channels they actually want. Obviously, it wouldn't be exactly a la carte. You would still they would still be bundled, but they would be more focused bundles, right? As opposed to paying a hundred dollars a month or more again, not a year, a month for for the entire cable package. Um, reportedly, Disney refused this. Um, they've since come out being like, "Well, we we were willing to do it, but Directv." wouldn't compromise with us. But DirecTV was like, they really didn't want to do it at all. Um, d- you know, ultimately, it makes sense why Disney would refuse to do this because their business model, like all of these other media companies, is built. It, the business model when it comes to pay TV, it is built from its inception on forcing cable companies to take an all or nothing approach, right? Again, like I said, Disney gets a fee per subscriber per channel. So more channels means more subscribers, means more fees, which means more money. Um, and sports channels, and again, usually those fees are not standard. It'll be like, you know, the fee that that uh, DirecTV has to pay Disney for every person with ESPN is going to be higher than maybe FX or the Disney channel. And the reason why the sports channels, they're particularly expensive because places like Disney have to pay really large licensing rights to the NBA, the NFL, MLB, you know, it's so, so they need to, they need to kind of compensate for that. So, um, direct TV again is trying to find a way to kind of make it cheaper for the consumer. Cause I think they see the writing on the wall saying like, people just don't want the full thing. We need to find the only way we're going to survive is if we give people more flexibility. Uh, and again, we have a quote here from direct TV like the company in a press release saying, quote, instead of allowing distributors like DirecTV to also develop smaller, more tailored packages at prices that reflect the value they get from the content, programmers have continued to impose and enforce strict bundling requirements. Um, And this is probably the worst possible time for this to happen. So like I said, you know, football is just starting up. Like I said, it was literally right before uh, a college football game. I believe like regular NFL games are about to start up 
Um, again, I'm not a sports person, so I don't have like the date circled on my calendar. Um, but you also have other things, right? So uh, the presidential debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump is going to be on ABC uh, tomorrow night, September 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's a Disney-owned channel. So uh, it's, you know, you're not going to have access to ABC if you have DirecTV. Now, that's not as big of a problem because the debate is still going to be simulcast on other channels. But still, that, that was a... You know, that's not a requirement, I believe, right? So there's a scenario where, you know, you wouldn't even be able to watch this if you didn't have ABC or some other, if you, excuse me, if, you if you're a DirecTV subscriber and you didn't have some other way to watch ABC like through Disney Plus or something, right? Um, ultimately, it's hard for me, like I wrote here in my notes, boohoo. Like it's hard for me to really feel bad for either of these because they're both massive corporations. To be fair, Disney is way bigger and now I'm actually curious. I'm pulling up Robinhood. Let's see what their market caps are. Because um, you know, while they're both huge corporations that probably underpay their workers, there is a power differential here. So Disney's market cap is $160 billion with a B. And then DirecTV... Oh, DirecTV is not a public company. So I can't even look it up. Uh, but what I would imagine... So, so that segue didn't go anywhere. <laughs> but I would imagine DirecTV is not bringing in the same amount of revenue that Disney is. So ultimately, you know, I don't want to say they're 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 not both bad guys, but there's really no good guy here, right? Um, so really, it's more of a I, I'm taking more interest in this as like an observer, almost like it's like another sport. If I can't, if I'm a Directv subscriber and I can't watch, uh, you know, ESPN's coverage of NFL games, this is a, this is the new spectator sport. Who's gonna blink first? Who who has the upper hand in this standoff? Um, and I don't know if it's immediately clear. Despite that power differential, because DirecTV subscribers, it's not like they're going to necessarily go anywhere uh, because of this. Because again, the charter one last year only lasted about like less than two weeks. So it's not necessarily like this is going to immediately hurt DirecTV's bottom line. And then, but Disney, um, you know, also has some legs here because th their channels are still available elsewhere. They're still getting revenue from these channels. It's not like this is just content going down the tube. Um... You know, and again, it, but at the same time, I don't know if it's going to be resolved as quickly as this charter one. Again, it seems like a fundamental, a fundamental disagreement about how the how the business should work. Um, we have a quote here from Directv CFO Ray Carpenter saying, "Quote: This is not the kind of dispute where we're haggling over percentage points on a rate. This is really about changing the model in a way that gives people that gives everyone confidence that this industry can survive." End quote. And I think that's I think that point is really well taken. It's it's this is a they're completely trying to... DirecTV is really trying to rethink how this business model works um, out of self-preservation, right? Um, and again, maybe they are hunkering down, right? So both sides have offered credits towards other pay TV options. So DirecTV uh, is giving people like a little coupon. I think you have to like... you have They don't just give it to you. You have to like fill out a form. But they're directing people to competitors like Dishes Sling TV and Fubo. And I think they're getting... I think these companies like Fubo and DirecTV are, under, are starting to understand that they are not competitors. Their real enemy, quote unquote, is... Are the Disneys, are the Warner Brothers, are the the pro, the pro the programmers. Um... And that they need to kind of stick together. Uh, Disney is also directing people to other services, but it's like their own service. They're directing people to Hulu Live TV. So maybe this is why Disney is so intransigent. Is that that? Intransigent, right? They're, they're so immovable because they're like, well, you know, the, 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 the slow death of cable, well, maybe let's speed it up a little bit. Um, and people will get hooked on Hulu Live TV and be like, why well, don't I even have direct TV and cut out this middleman, right? But the thing that may kind of tip the scales here, because again, they both kind of have um, the ability to kind of, for this to become a war of attrition, right? But what could tip the scales is that this may be anti-competitive on Disney's part. Um, I have a big quote here from DirecTV's press release. I'm going to kind of just read it through and I think it'll kind of, and then I'll maybe briefly go over it, but I think it kind of sums up what I'm trying to say here. 
Quote, Disney demanded that to reach any licensing agreement or to extend access to its programming, DirecTV must agree to waive all claims that Disney's behavior is anti-competitive. Moreover, any future lawsuits resulting from DirecTV slash Disney licensing agreements would be adjudicated in California and not New York because, as Disney Council specifically stated, um, SDNY Judge Garnett, quote, didn't understand the issues, end quote, when granting a preliminary injunction against Disney's venue sports, which of course is the joint venture that Disney has with Fox and Warner brothers and um that has been blocked by a judge for being anti-competitive and that they're being sued by fubo and you know who's supporting fubo direct tv let me continue with this quote uh here in this press release they say quote disney's last minute demands to foreclose upon any legal accountability for its growing pattern of anti-competitive actions should be troubling to all pro-consumer advocacy groups regulars and department of justice attorneys alike end quote so they're basically their argument is basically like look they're already in hot water for this um, with venue sports that they are trying to ensure that they don't have to worry about what they're worrying, what they have, what they're having to deal with now with venue sports. Um, but you know, this idea, it, it, this idea of like the, again, it's, it's so funny how certain things are allowed and other things aren't. So it was recently overturned by the Supreme court, but for years there was a, a, a Supreme court case where I've talked about on this channel, um, United States v Paramount. And the idea was that it basically put an end to what's uh, among many things, but put an end to block booking where basically st distributors would force theaters to take a big slate of movies, most of which they didn't want so that they would, but then they would get like the two movies they actually wanted. Eventually that was ruled as unconstitutional. I think that was rolled back. Um, the case itself was kind of overturned, but I'm not sure of that part of it. Um, but it's weird that that was ruled unconstitutional in the 40s. And yet by the time cable comes around in like the, what was it, like the 80s? Like the late 70s, early 80s? They basically, the, the government allowed the exact thing. The, the, the idea of forcing the cable package feels like block booking. Um, almost worse, because at least the consumers with the block booking in theaters, they could choose whether or not to go to the movies. Like they didn't have to pay. The theaters were the ones who had to pay for all the, the movies. Uh, not the consumer. If anything, the, the the cable package is even worse. Ultimately, the issue here for both companies is that it's a lose-lose situation, right? Um, if you keep the status quo and force consumers to subscribe to these massive cable packages with a bunch of fat that they don't really want, it's going to drive people away. And that's going to kill the pay TV industry. But if you offer customized packages that are cheaper, it's going to severely reduce revenue for these media companies and that's going to kill the pay TV industry. So it's it's kind of this damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I have a quote here from an analyst named Craig Moffat uh, saying, quote, it is not an overstatement to say that bundling is everything for the pay TV industry. Without it, what's left of linear TV, or at least its economics, would rapidly unravel, replaced by a punishing a la carte model that even at stratospheric prices for the must-have networks wouldn't come close to replacing the lost revenues of the current model, end quote. So it's kind of this thing, and that and that illustrates the divide here because Direct TV, again, both parties are are just are. are I, just, I just learned about this philosophical idea, and it's very convenient. I learned about it. it's called the prisoner's dilemma, where it. I'm not going to explain the reason why it's called that. Basically, it's the idea that people will act self-interestedly, but by doing so, they're going to create an overall bad outcome for all the parties. By working self-interested, you're actually going to work against your self-interest. So the reason why I'm bringing that up is that if you apply to this situation, DirecTV understands the only way that they make money by having subscribers. And the only way for them to get subscribers in their mind is to offer these cheaper, smaller, um, genre-focused packages. Um, Disney's incentive is to have as many channels in front of these subscribers and have them pay for it as possible. If you have genre-based packages... That's going to be, you know, if you get rid of bundling, pay TV can survive. But ultimately, the, the media companies are going to say, well, it'd be worth even keeping around at that point. Like, it will survive, but it won't. Will, will the money it brings in justify the whole operation? And that's ultimately the biggest problem, is that if you theoretically do these genre-based packages, the system will survive, but it's, is it going to really bring in the money that makes it worth it? for companies like Disney and Warner Brothers and Fox to even have these channels. Um, and they might decide, to let's just shutter them because we're not getting the revenue that we want. 
Um, so it's a lose-lose situation, but as someone who does not, uh, I'm a cord never right? I never, I, I, I had no cord to ever even cut, um, except growing up, of course, but I wasn't paying for that because I was a child. Um, this is more of, uh, more interesting to me. Um, it just represents a, you know, the, 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 the clawing, trying to stay alive as, as the animal's slowly dying, right? It's, it, this is, it's gonna die. It's just a matter of how quickly and on, and who, who gets to re, who gets to rebuild the pieces, right? Who, who gets to, who gets to set the terms going forward? 